three right, two left, uh, right hand six. Frequency monitoring codes or listening squawks, how do they help us as small GA pilots stay away from the big guys and help controllers to keep us safe in the air? Find out here on a special edition of Rory on Air. North Romeo Zulu, Manchester, go ahead. North Romeo Zulu, uh, Sport 7352, please don't report your intention. The yes, minute you're looking towards the, you're heading towards the day. Hello and welcome to another edition of Rory on Air. This video features a real-world example of how the use of a frequency monitoring code or listening squawk can be really helpful to both controllers and pilots when flying near controlled airspace. I'm back in the C-42, this time with another BBC colleague, Scott Henderson. After departing Barton, I've changed to Manchester radar on 118.580 and I'm squawking their FMC of 7366. I think we'll make a turn to the left and we'll go up this valley and we'll go back up towards the northeast. Yeah. There's uh, the uh, the whole Moss transmitter over there. Yeah, got that. Yeah, that's marked on here too. So we'll just make a turn down this valley here. That'll be Dugstones, yeah. Let's have a look at that while we're here. That's just outside the control zone, so as long as we don't go any further west than the edge of it, we're, we're good. Dovestone's reservoir is marked on the chart as a visual reference point and I'm aware of its proximity to the eastern edge of Manchester's control zone. Yeah, I've walked all around here and went right up to that end of there. It's a lovely part of the world so I decide to make a slight detour so Scott and I can take a closer look. This is where the frequency monitoring code really comes into its own. Quite nice isn't it? Yeah, it's very different seeing it from the air isn't yeah. it? If we do lose the engine, we'll glide onto a field on the edge of the valley down there. Golf Valley, India Romeo Zulu from Manchester. Golf Romeo Zulu, Manchester, go ahead. Golf Romeo Zulu, uh, Sport 7352, please don't report your intention. The yeah, minute you're looking towards the, you're heading towards the Sport 7352, uh, Wilco, we are just uh, having a look at the reservoir here. We're now making a turn to the east and we're going to head north. Oh, Premier Zulu, thank you. Uh, you can keep 7352 on the squat, you can H1015, and uh, it'll be a basic service. 7352, QNH1016, and basic service, many thanks, Premier Zulu. Oh, Premier Zulu, the QNH now 1015. QNH1015, Premier Zulu. Good day. 6630, tell us to call on Ramey. Okay, 73. What do they say? 7352. 7, 3, 5, 2. Why does the squawk number change? What does that indicate? So, what happened there is that because we flew to the reservoir, we were quite close. We were within a mile or two of the edge of controlled airspace, and it made the controller a bit jittery. Which is fair enough, I, was, I did think there was a chance that might happen, but we haven't done anything we're not allowed to do. Yeah. And actually the system worked perfectly. Because we were squawking um, 7366, they saw on their screen all our ADSB information. So that's why they knew my call sign, even though I haven't spoken to them, because their screen shows a blip and it says what my call sign is. So um, they know who I am and where I am. Yeah. And she says... Golf Romeo Zulu, basically are you on frequency because they're expecting me to be. So I only put that 7366 code in when I'm listening to Manchester. So she's, she calls me, says, are you listening? I say, yeah, I'm listening. She asks what the hell we're doing because she thinks we were just going to carry on. Another 30 seconds on that course, if I hadn't have turned, and we would have flown straight into the control zone. Yeah. And then they'd have had to stop the aircraft on final approach. All sorts of shit yes. happens. So she then gives me a different squawk, which makes it easier for her to know that she's. we've now established two-way contact and I'm now getting a basic service off them. Yeah. So I need to now call her before I change back to Manchester to Barton, yeah. which I wouldn't have done if I'd stayed on 7366. I see. I could just go back to Barton at will. Yeah. But there's no harm in getting a basic service. I don't normally ask for it because they're busy and it just takes up their time. And that's what the listening squawk is for, is so that if they want to talk to me, they can, but yeah. I don't need to waste their time otherwise. So that worked pretty well. I haven't seen dubstones from the air before, so that's quite that's a new thing for me, that. Yeah. And I haven't had Manchester call me 
on spec either, so that's new. <laughs> it's all it's all well and good having a thingy on. Yeah, at least you've got that recorded now. It's worth noting that my radio calls during this exchange with the controller were far from perfect, so do check out CAP413 rather than copying me word for word. It's also worth noting that it's easy to make mistakes when your workload as a pilot increases and you're having to do lots of things at once. It also is quite a good example. I, I misheard the Q&H there, which has changed. And uh, it's a good, you know, good learning point from that is that she's given me a squawk code, she's given me an instruction, she's asking me questions, all totally legit. And I'm having to A, fly the aeroplane away from the controlled airspace, which I was doing anyway, yeah. and respond to her. You know, and then you know, repeat back. You have to read back certain pieces of information, like what service you're receiving, what squawk you're on, and the Q&H pressure setting. And when I said it wrong, she then came back to me again. She has to have me say it back to her correctly yeah. before she can let me be. Yeah. Because that's crucial. Because the controlled airspace starts at three and a half thousand feet, but that's three and a half thousand feet based on that pressure setting. So yeah. if I'm wrong, I could think I was underneath it, but actually then fly straight into it. Making mistakes and busting controlled airspace is something I worry about as a pilot. I know it could cause danger to myself and other aircraft as well as potentially lead to fines and even a criminal conviction, not to mention the obvious embarrassment. What might seem on the face of it to be a minor infringement for just a few moments can actually have wide-reaching consequences. Controllers have to keep IFR traffic separated by 5 nautical miles or 5,000 feet vertically from unknown aircraft operating inside controlled airspace. However, in some cases at certain ATC units, this has been reduced to 3 nautical miles or 3,000 feet vertically. Either way, infringements can cause airliners to have to break off their approach or departure paths so that controllers can maintain safe separation. You can imagine the delays this would cause to passengers as well as the extra cost to both the airlines and the environment in additional fuel burn. While flying around in Class G airspace, a listening squawk can help controllers keep IFR traffic safely separated when things such as the instrument approach fans are in use. A quick call to check your level and routing enables controllers to coordinate your flight with other traffic and therefore reduces their separation minima to 3 nautical miles and or 1,000 feet. I think the listening squawks can be a real help in enabling pilots and controllers to identify and resolve a potential conflict before it arises. It's also a good way to retain the freedom offered by uncontrolled airspace as opposed to airports applying to have their CAS expanded. I'd love to know if you've been in a situation where using a frequency monitoring code has aided you in some way so do leave me a comment below. Do subscribe, like and share as well, it really helps. And I'll see you the next time we reach for the sky. Cheerio!